Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Louise. Good morning. Tuesday the 27th of October, our main story for you. More than 50 Conservative MPs have written to the Prime Minister calling for a clear roadmap out of tough coronavirus restrictions in the north of England. They say the pandemic is threatening the government's efforts to level up the country. Our political correspondent Helen Catt has this report. And we've been talking about it throughout the programme. Overnight, Warrington became the latest area of England to be put under the tightest coronavirus restrictions, affecting a further 200,000 people. Our reporter, Maureen Smith... The Immunity to the coronavirus could only last a few months, according to new research. The team at... Uh, with just one week to go until the US presidential election, Judge Amy Coney Barrett has been sworn into the Supreme Court after being nominated for the role by President Trump. Democrats have criticised the timing of the vote and argued that it should have been postponed until after the election. Our North America correspondent, David Willis, reports. Which is looking glorious. Good morning Good to morning. you. Good morning. To seeing the ghost trail later, Carol. Thank you very much. Enjoying those cosy gloves of yours as well, Carol, this morning. Keep, <laughs> keeping them... Now, earlier this month, Liverpool became the first major city in England to be put into Tier 3 restrictions as a number of cases of coronavirus rocketed. For the mayor, Joe Anderson, the crisis became very personal when his brother, Bill, died with the virus. In his first television interview since that devastating loss, I've been to meet him. So that was a Joe Anderson um, talking to me. It really gives a stark reminder um, again of the impact that it has on families. Yeah, so many families right across the UK and, and around the world, aren't they? It's uh, fast approaching 20 past six this morning. Let's have a little look at the front page when, when terrified. Laugh in the face of yeah. danger. I'm not sure. I think, it, I think it makes people, other people, a little bit nervous when I do that, but yes. Um, well done, him. Victoria Derbyshire is on the front page of many of the papers this morning. And actually, it's one of those stories where it's been in the papers and then she's already been on social media this morning to um, sort of add to the story. So the story is that she says she'll break the rule of six at Christmas. This is an interview she did in the Radio Times a few weeks ago saying, um, if the rule of six is still in place, we're breaking it to have the rule of seven. We just are. And this morning she's been on social media to say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. And she says she'll abide by whatever rules are in place on December the 25th. The Radio Times interview was a few weeks ago and she said she sort of misspoke. So she's been clearing that one up already. What do you want? Do you want the pill that can banish snoring or the sea's biggest skyscraper? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think I snore. <laughs> I I bet other, I'm going to do the pill. The pill. <laughs> <laughs> it's been voted in the gallery and I've, I've ruled you out yes, anyway. the pill. I want it to know about pill. this pill. Oh, here we go. A pill that can be taken at bedtime could stop snoring. A Excuse you. me, Louise. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> I have to go and sanitise the entire area now. Right. Luckily, um, you're over there. Yes. Um, now, are you any good at art? I'm, I'm, I have once painted. Some okay. Paintings, what about your children? I, and children? Yeah, they're right. Okay. Have a look at this little lad. He's five years old, and now his mum. Every, every every parent thinks their children are gifted and tough. You gave me the choice of two stories, and then and I, you gave them both. Well, this is beautiful. I wasn't really giving you a choice. No. <laughs> was it one of those fake choices? It was which one first? <laughs> right, okay. We could have run so out of time. So essentially I had no choice. We right? could have run out of time. Uh, good morning to you watching Breakfast from the BBC. Now, earlier this year we covered the story of single dad Samuel and his two sons. They spent lockdown in their small one-bedroom flat in Bristol and there was nowhere to play outside. Two BBC Breakfast viewers were so moved by Samuel's story that they offered the family a free stay at their holiday park in Devon. Fiona Lambden reports. It's lovely to see one enjoying the beach, isn't it? With a bit of generosity, that as well. <laughs> Time now to get the news, the travel, and the weather wherever you're watching. See you for the headlines in a few minutes. Hello, good morning. Watching Breakfast with Louise and Dan. It's uh, six thirty exactly. We'll bring you all the latest news and sport in a moment. Also. Good morning. Let's bring you a summary then of today's main stories. Um, more than 50 Conservative MPs have written to the Prime Minister calling for a clear roadmap out of tough coronavirus restrictions. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever she's talking about, it still cheers me up. <laughs> uh, uh, we've all got our little breakfast mug. Even Holly's got a breakfast mug this morning. I do. It is one week um, until the US election when we'll, uh, not we, but Americans will decide whether Donald Trump remains president or Joe Biden takes his place in the White House. Four years ago, John Kay went on a road trip along Route 45, meeting people along... And we shall be following that very closely over the next few days. We will. Um, it was a lovely day out and about yesterday, and I can see it? that it is as well this morning. Carol is at Hampton Court Palace for us. Um, and you've got a lovely garden there, Carol. Um, you're going to show us around later too. Morning.
Actually, I won't see half now. It's close than that, isn't it? Because you said for the headlines as well. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on. <laughs> I've been distracted. Now, there were childhood friends um, and the ultimate 80s girl group. But since lockdown, Sarah Dallin and Karen Woodward have formed their very own Bananarama Bubble. What an idea. Um, instead of the planned tour, the pop superstars behind hits like Venus and really... Our entertainment correspondent, Pat... Con Colin Patterson. <laughs> Patterson Collins. Back to, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Back to one of their old stomping grounds. I defy you to be at home and not have been smiling and dancing along to that. You know what? That takes me... I can, if I close my eyes, I can hear that song blaring out of my sister's bedroom. <laughs> that takes me right back. Some proper tunes there, weren't they? Just endless. Absolutely brilliant. That's cheered me up enormously. Um, should we get some news, travel and weather while you're singing along wherever you are this morning? We'll see you for the headlines in a few minutes' time. Uh, so we are eight minutes past seven. It's Tuesday morning. Time to find out what's happening with the weather. Carol is at Hampton Court Palace this morning somewhere. I'm sure she's going to pounce. Oh, there ah, she is. Pounce. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in the last half an hour, Whitbread, the owner of Premier Inn and Brewers Fair, has announced results. Uh, Vish is here. She's got the details for us this morning. Morning. What have you got? Good morning. Are uh, you watching Breakfast with Louise and Dan this morning? Uh, let's get you up to date on the latest news, 7.30. Uh, more than 70 Conservative MPs have written to the Prime Minister calling for a clear roadmap out of tough coronavirus restrictions. Yeah, those uh, 50 MPs who represent areas in the north of England, north Wales and the Scottish border say the pandemic is threatening the government's efforts to level up the country. Uh, let's talk about that. It's uh, 20 to 8. Now, um, Holly promised us early uh, a chat with someone who's had a quite remarkable weekend and you are a bit ahead. Thank you very much, Holly. Carol is at Hampton Court Palace uh, for us this morning to give us an update on the weather and I think hopefully ghosts as well. Ooh. Morning. <laughs> Thank you. You can't whack a good ghost story. Oh, mm. you can't. Thanks so much. See you later. Um, earlier this year, we covered the story of single dad Samuel and his two sons. They spent lockdown in their small one-bedroom flat in Bristol with nowhere to play outside. If you're in a situation where you need a bit of a lift, then, then watch this, because two BBC Breakfast viewers were so moved by Samuel's story, they offered the family a free stay in their holiday park in Devon. Phil Emden has the story. Well, that's officially lovely, Louise. Just really lovely. <laughs> They've only been there an hour, look, having a lovely time. Slice of kindness. Ken and Sheila Sims, thank you very much for that. It's a wonderful story. 7.52. The Jack Reacher novels have been topping bestseller lists around the globe and thrilling millions of fans for more than 20 years. So, when the author Lee Child decided that the time had come to sort of retire the pen on that one, he didn't want uh, to be the end of the story. So he handed the creative control over to his brother, Andrew, and together they've now written the latest novel. We can speak to both. From today. And Thanks, I think there's both. a TV series in the, in the offering like, as well. Yeah, exactly. Amazon Prime. Brilliant. Uh, stay with us. Headlines are coming up shortly. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Louise Minchin and Dan Walker. Our headlines for you at 8 o'clock. Um, it is 8 minutes past 8 and... Um, <laughs> We're going to go to Carol, who's been scaring <laughs> herself, scaring herself and her team, actually, we saw in the last few moments, but don't worry, at Hampton Court Palace. What's going on, Carol? <laughs> Excellent ghost story. Thank you very much, Carol. I'll just say more later. Take that spooky light with you, Carol. See you. <laughs> very interesting to go back and talk mm. to them after that length of time as well, isn't it? Four years on, yeah. Um, uh, later on today, we're having a good chat with Chris Packham, aren't we? We are. It's Autumn Watch. And one of the highlights of this series is going to be... Some That's in the Isle of May. We'll be back there with uh, somebody who really knows a lot more than we do. <laughs> yes, who doesn't need notes. Chris Packham later. Uh, yeah, he's just going to be here just after nine o'clock this morning. Um, every year, cider producer Hawks asks local people to donate their excess apples and receive a battle of booze in return. This year, uh, with coronavirus restrictions in place, they've turned to postal donations as well. And the London-based producer has been inundated with tonnes of fruit. Ben Bland is there, of MP for Rossendale and Darwin. Um, if you enjoyed us looking at those grey seals, there's more of that coming up shortly. Right now, though, the news, travel and the weather, wherever you are. <laughs> 